Okay. Welcome to Wine Wanderings. Today I have Bruce Joseph with me, a master distiller at Hodling and Company of uh, Junipero Gin. And Bruce, welcome. As you know, I'm writing about the Renaissance of gin. Thank you, Tricia. I'm happy to be here. Bruce, as a background, I'd like to give to, to um, all the readers. I understand that in 1980, you joined the iconic Anchor Brewing Company in San Francisco, and you were working on both brewing and distilling sides of the business. Your talents were tapped by the owner of Anchor Brewing, Fritz Maytag, and he expressed a desire over the years to distill rye whiskey. And that was your first goal when you started distilling in 1993. Once you thought that whiskey distilling had progressed enough, you went to work then on gin. And in 1996, Junipero Gin, known now as America's original craft gin, um, became um, a a phenomenon and you hit the ground running with bold expressive botanicals bottled and an unfiltered 98.6 proof. Now as Junipero celebrates its 25th anniversary this year, Bruce, you're now the master distilling at Hodling and Company, formerly Anchor Brewing, and you serve at the helm leading the production of Junipero gin as well as other craft spirits in the Hodling portfolio. So Bruce, Tell me a little bit about Junipero gin, your style of gin, and the botanicals you use to make it. Why is it so special? Well, you know, when we started working on gin, we were working um, in the London dry style. And um, Fritz Maytag, who's the owner um, of Anchor Brewing and Distilling, um, really guided like our our efforts of learning about gin and kind of developing the recipe for Junipero. And I think during that time, um, we, we had kind of an eye on developing a gin that, like I said, in the London dry style, but that was really bold and crisp and, and full of flavor. I think that's kind of um, what we had our eye on is something that would make a really, really good martini. Um, and so um, you know, our gin, we have 12 botanicals, but the, the botanicals are all botanicals that had probably, even at that time, had been used in gin before. There were no um, kind of, uh, you know, off the wall or <laughs> really unique ingredients that were non-traditional in it. And, um, you know, our gin is, of course, juniper berry, coriander, orris root, angelica root, um, lemon peel, sweet orange peel, Seville orange peel, cubeb, cardamom, anise seed, um, cassia bark, <laughs> am I leaving something out? I, I always get, and, and grains of paradise are, th are, the, are the 12. And so, you know, those are, those are um, you know, pretty much botanicals that have been used in gin. Um, you know, I think, you know, kind of being new to distilling that it freed us up somewhat that um, we didn't have like a lot of preconceived notions of what we had to do. You know, we weren't constrained by that. Um, and that's part of the reason that um, Junipero's a, a slightly higher proof and unfiltered. As far as we knew at that time, there are no um, London dry gins out on the market that are unfiltered, but um, we, we did a lot of work trying to get the intensity of flavor that we were looking for. And um, when we got to that point with our recipe and then started thinking about packaging, bottling the gin and thinking about filtering, we realized, you know, filtering is gonna decrease that intensity of flavor that we worked hard to achieve. And so um, we, we decided to do it as an unfiltered gin, which, um, I think was kind of unique at the time. And I'm sure like our background, we were brewers and we we're craft brewers. And I think that background in craft brewing um, probably influenced, um, you know, the way we went about developing a, a distilled product too. So Bruce, what other craft spirits are you making now? Well, mainly we make rye whiskey and um, Junipero um, we're always working on um, um, 
new things, but um, you know, mainly it's been um, different types of gin um, and and um, rye whiskey, and we're working on some other whiskeys besides rye whiskey now. Um, we've done an old Tom gin, a a Jennifer um, that was. Um, um, you know, very interesting. You know, it's it was something we realized once we did that, started working on that soon after we had Junipero up and running and um, um, started working on it in 1999. And it was something we experimented with over a number of years. And I think finally bottled and released it in 2007 and um, realized a lot of Americans um, are, are totally unfamiliar <laughs> with the style and a lot of them don't like it so that's, it's, um, it's very different style for sure mm -hmm. yeah I had a call from one guy who um, he, he called and he said you know a friend of mine told me to buy um, your gin and I did and there's something wrong with it well I think the friend <laughs> had recommended that he buy Junipero and he bought the the Geneva instead and it, it in his eyes it wasn't gin yeah. So Bruce, what's your favorite cocktail for your gin? I'd, I'd say probably, um, you, you know, there's so many, you know, kind of inventive and great cocktails out there that are being made now. Um, my, my favorite probably is a martini and I like it with a twist because it, it kind of accents that crisp quality that, you know, that we like in Junipero. Um, so yeah, probably that, but I like, you know, a, a lot like a Negroni or, or a gin and tonic, you know, like the traditionals. And then I like all the things that um, mixologists are doing now. And, and that's one thing that, you know, that I find Junipero works well with all the new cocktails as they get more elaborate that um, kind of having that big flavor, it stands up well and you, you can, always taste what the you know the base alcohol is i actually like gin with um falernium uh liqueur and some lime juice and a little bit of uh basil in it so you'll have to try that sometime that sounds good it's good okay. email me the rest of the, <laughs> how to do it I'm, I'm i'm a really bad bartender so i have okay. to have, you know kind of explicit instructions <laughs> i will do that um so do you have a favorite quote about gin um, yeah, there's one that, that's, um, kind of just a real simple one that's, um, according to chemist, gin is a solution. Uh, I kind of <laughs> like that one. For everyone at the yeah. end of the day, especially. Yeah. <laughs> and where can we find your gin? Um, you know, places that have, you know, kind of a good selection, but, um, we have a, a kind of a product locator at juniperogin.com. And then, um, you know, the online things like Drizzly and Reserve Bar are, are places to look to. So Great. Well, Bruce, thank you so much for joining us on Wine Wanderings, where we also talk about spirits and watch for the upcoming edition of the Renaissance of Gin. Anyway, thank you for being with me. Thank you for having me, Tricia.